Refurbishing an old Mammoth steam wagon, part two. Making a compressed air adapter with the thread size of quarter of an inch by 26 threads per inch to fit the safety valve bush in the boiler. If you watched the first episode, you will see how difficult it was for me to hold the piece of silicone rubber pipe over the hole on the top of the boiler without it leaking. The obvious option is to make a safety valve adapter to fit the existing bush in the boiler. And that way I can easily get compressed air into the boiler by using this adapter with the piece of silicone rubber tubing. This is a very easy item to manufacture. And if you're a beginner to model engineering and lathe work in general, then making simple parts like this to start with is not only an ideal introduction to lathe work, you end up with a very useful, usable part. I have a piece of hexagon brass in the chuck of my Boxford lathe. The Boxford is bigger than the Myford lathe, it's a 5 inch centre height, but you could make this part on any small lathe and if you were really clever you could make it in an electric drill, but I'm not going to go there, this is about lathe work. I reduced the diameter of one end of this piece of brass bar down to about 5 sixteenths of an inch. The end of the bar was already rounded, but I'm smoothing the round end, first by using a file, followed by some emery cloth. A couple of health and safety warnings here. When filing in the lathe, make sure the file has a handle, and usually I would fold over the emery cloth so it's thicker. I didn't do that in this instance because the pressure on the work was very light. The next part of the job involved using a centre drill to make a hole in the centre of the piece of bar, followed by a 1 8 of an inch diameter twist drill. And with this twist drill, I drilled all the way through. The finished part looked a bit rough, but this is just an illusion. You can remove all this mess just with your fingers, although I don't recommend doing that. I just rubbed the piece of hexagon bar on a piece of wet to dry sandpaper, 400 grade to be exact and all of the roughness was removed, and now it looks quite good. When I repositioned this part in the chuck, it didn't run perfectly true, but it's not a precision part, so this is not important. The only reason I removed the work from the chuck was to film the last two clips. What I'm doing at the moment is just turning some very shallow grooves to grip the silicone rubber pipe. Turning these grooves is not really essential for this application, because the pressure that a Mamod steam engine runs at is very low indeed. And when the silicone rubber tube is in place on these grooves, it's not going anywhere. Here I'm finishing the job using a piece of scotch brite just to clean it up. This finish is more than adequate for this part. And talking about parts, it's time to part it off. I pulled the work further out of the chuck, because I need to leave enough metal at the other end to turn it down to a quarter of an inch and thread it. Once the part that I needed was safely in the chip tray, I removed what was left of the brass bar from the chuck. I removed the bit that I wanted from the chip tray and put it in the chuck the other way around. Now once again I need to machine this part, but this time accurately down to a quarter of an inch in diameter. Over the years I've done quite a lot of plane turning, and here as you can see I got very close to the finished dimension without using the micrometer. I took a tiny bit more off and the micrometer shows that this is the correct diameter. In fact, in this clip, it's a little bit on the small side. So I moved the handle on the cross slide to withdraw the tool slightly and took a cut all the way down. If you're using a quick change tool holder and you do not anticipate having to move the position of the tool itself, you could set the tool in a position so that when the vernier on the top slide was at the zero position, you could be confident of reducing a piece of bar down to quarter of an inch. Now comes the important part. The thread that I need is quarter by 26, and this is a BSF thread, British Standard Fine. And in the days before metric, this was a very popular thread. I'm not using the tailstock die holder, because I don't thread too many quarter BSF things, so I fit the die into a standard hand die holder and keep it in line down the work by very carefully following it with the tailstock chuck. I'm not putting any pressure on the die holder with the tailstock chuck, merely following it to keep it in line. After cutting the thread, the final part of the job is to use a very narrow parting tool to make a shallow groove where the hexagon finishes and the thread begins. The reason for this is so that I can fit a silicone o-ring. When working on these small toy steam engines, you have to remember that the boiler bushes are soft-soldered. 
and with a hexagon part where you can apply a spanner, you could inadvertently over tighten the part and when you tried to undo it, maybe the bush would come out of the boiler. I've seen this happen a lot. By fitting a small silicone o-ring as shown here to the part, you can get an airtight seal with finger pressure only. I've never liked those fibre washers that used to be used on Mammod steam engines. I prefer silicone o-rings. They're very simple to use. And unlike the fibre washers, these silicone o-rings do not get brittle over time and fall to pieces. This clip shows the newly made adapter fitted into the boiler bush where the safety valve would normally go. It's a very simple job to fit the silicone rubber tubing. You do not need to use any kind of clip because the air pressure that you'll be using will not be sufficient to blow the pipe off the adapter. I'm using a clip like this, but that's not really a good idea. Okay for me, I know what I'm doing. And as you can hear by the tone of the whistle, I'm not putting much air in there. These mammoth steam whistles blow a bit better on steam. Using compressed air, they always seem to be a bit dry and hissy. Despite having a much better air supply, the engine is still not running properly. I know, I'll squirt it with WD-40. This only made things worse because the cylinder is leaking on the port face, and the lubricating oil I'd previously applied was the main thing that was responsible for sealing the steamways. I would say there are a couple of things wrong with this engine that need sorting out, and I'll do that in the next episode. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.